And, and then, then from there, there we, we sorry, the weird noises. noises. From, from there, there we went to um, we went, went to the hostage, hostage situation. situation. Yeah, that, that uh, adventure. adventure. So uh, Rukan woke up with his dreams. I don't remember the dream that night. Oh, uh, oh, it hadn't been about a dragon. Oh yeah, yeah that was um, he was uh, riding a dragon. Okay. And um, he was devouring his. Uh, his tribe that he uh, that he had grown up with, he he was kind of um, burning their village and uh, feeding feeding orcs and half orcs to the dragon, and that's what he he, he woke up with. Yeah. Um, we also noticed that Rokan is getting these weird, strange dreams, um, and uh, and uh, we'll see. Probably, maybe something will come up from it. Maybe not. Uh, it's really always awesome for me as a, a dungeon master to uh, hear uh, these cool uh, things that the players like to add to the story. So uh, so from there he goes and sees Creighton. Creighton says, Oh, okay, so uh, I don't have anything for you today, but maybe tomorrow. Um, but uh, yeah. And then I remember you saying that in a place so full of people, and outlawish people, you're telling me that there is no heresy in this entire city? And then he says, well, I'm sure something will pop up. I don't have anything today. Uh, and then in his books, just writing. Yeah. Uh, so Rokan goes to leave, and then a guard charges uh, and charges through him and goes to the office of Creighton and speaks to Creighton and says, uh, sir, there's a... Uh, I don't remember who it was. I don't think there was a. I don't think we had no, a, we a, voice a, a voice. Sir, there. Oh, there's a guy. Uh, you know, he's holding a, a family hostage. Uh, he seems to have some sort of uh, magic. Uh, it's from the clouds. Yeah. Drama. And uh, so, uh, Crane's like, "Well, I have just the thing for you, marked." And then um, Rokan, and then Rokan turns around, and Rokan was, of course, had his mission for the day. Um, you strapped on, you yeah, strapped into this, or no, you didn't, you uh, rode with the guard uh, to the farm, yeah, and on the way you passed this character who seemed to be stealing something. Uh, yeah, I didn't pay any attention no, to it. He had a big, big, long coat and a, looked like a huge feather in his hat. Yeah, big, like a, la like a lady hat. Like, like, like a lady, fancy uh, lady hat. Sun hat. Yeah. <laughs> but with like a feather hat. And like a broken feather. Yeah. Uh, didn't pay much attention to him, and then they kept riding forth, and then, uh, do you remember the scene from there? Yeah, um, I just sort of walked in, um, strutted right in, you know, because, um, there was, there was this guy holding a wand at a family, and, um, uh, all the other soldiers were kind of back, like, backed away, not entering the, uh, barn, and he's saying, you know, everyone stay back, or, you know, I'll kill him, I just walked right in. Um, uh, didn't have any weapons drawn, because I... I had figured that this guy was some kind of coward, um, holding up a family with children and everything. So I was right, and uh, he uh, he got panicky, and I just stood and in he was voiced by Homer Simpson. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, uh, he, one of our viewers uh, requested Homer Simpson, so I tried my best to do a Homer Simpson, and I, I still can't do it. <laughs> it was good at the time, though. I think. Yeah, I, uh, I was probably I overthink it every time. Probably his like high pitched or I can't do it. Yeah, but um, yeah, so. Oh, jeez, Merch! <laughs> Come on, Merch! Um, yeah, so, so, so I kind of, um, I was distracting him in that sense of trying to trying to come between him and the family. Because, um, of course, I see, again, they're, they're innocent. I don't even know what's going on. I just see that, you know, when, when there's a person holding some sort of magic weapon against, you know, women and children, that that's not cool. Um no. So, so I stood between them, and then that enabled the uh, <laughs> my uh, my guards to file in, who were voiced by Batman and uh, one and was Batman, Batman and one was Teddy from Bob's Burgers. Burgers. Yeah. So uh, my uh, my two stooges I'll showed up in. and uh, yeah, snuck in behind him, and um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go behind him, and I'm gonna get him real, I'm gonna get real close to him, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold him down like a bear, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be. And then, I, I turned, turned into uh, John Madden. But anyway, I forget who uh, I forget who, who struck first. 
but uh, at, at one point, I know he shot at me, and I just moved out of the way, and it, it hit the father. father. And I kind of went, oh, jeez. And, and the, the father, father was voiced by Peter Griffin. Griffin. Yeah. So, so he, he, of course, was... was <laughs> 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 and he was in pain. Uh, during, during this whole battle, or this whole introduction of the fight, uh, Adotilm, the uh, new, new character that you uh, that Rokan later meets, uh, the, the guy, guy with the funny, funny, funny lady hat and the long coat walks. He followed them to the scene and walks around the building, uh, sneaks up into the hayloft and then jumps down onto. Oh no! Throws no, a bottle. Yeah, he threw a. Uh, he threw a smoke. Yeah, he threw a, uh, a smoke screen jar and the which was fog, and uh, he fog enveloped the room, and then uh, the characters then started to fight, and that's when the guards advanced in, uh, and Teddy, I remember, started to hit Batman, uh, and there was a trouble there. They were trying to attack, trying and, to attack the, uh, yeah. the... Yeah. And then, in the middle of the... Yeah, in the middle of the uh, whole fiasco, Adotilm leaps from the hayloft and lands on top of the... the uh, uh, lands on top of the... Uh, I would say assailant. Assailant, <laughs> yeah. The suspect, uh, landing and dis disarming him with disarming his wand, and then he covers up the wand, and then oh, and then I stabbed him, didn't I? You because stabbed, I, yeah, yeah. You I stabbed, stabbed him with the calf. Yeah. I stabbed Adeltil because I was just because I had I, I had been attacking the uh, the suspect. The glowing light. Yeah, just by following the, the wand. And there was I, a glowing been, light inside this cloud him. this clouded room. Yeah, and then of course this this stranger, whoever this is, attacks him too, and I'm just blindly stabbing, so I hit I think I crit failed. <laughs> and yeah. so I hit Adatilm. <laughs> no no you atta- you hit Adatilm because you just you were attacking the light. Uh, oh, so whoever true. was holding the light yeah. and it was him. And uh I think got him in the some calf. serious damage, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh at that point I think they were both getting away. Mm-hmm. And uh, I uh, shot down the suspect with my crossbow, and that's what killed him. No, you or he, he, he fell. It, yeah, he fell in like the crossbow bolt stuck it, him. It was uh, okay. Yeah, Adeltil took his potion. Adeltil is a uh, this character is a wild sorcerer, a wild magic yeah. using sorceress. So I upped his sorcery points, so he would. But we also upped his chance for it. So I think he so he has a twenty percent chance. For his spells to fail mm. and for a random circumstance to happen, yep. <laughs> uh, but he casts all of his spells with the use of potions and bombs, and uh, he keeps all of his spells in bottles and jars. So he's like this little hoarder who just like walks around, and um, so he took a, a spider climb potion. He drank drinks that and then just walks up the side of the. Uh, uh, up the side of the pillar, up into the hayloft. The oh, yeah, that, suspect, that's what it was—the spider climb. Yeah, mm-hmm, but he. The, but then the suspect started climbing the, the ladder. Suspects started climbing the ladder. You shot his ankle, <laughs> yeah. critically hitting him, yeah. knocking him off, and then he dangled upside down. Yeah. Uh, and then you walked up to him and did a flourish and killed uh, yeah, him. Yeah, I slit his throat. Blade. I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just went. You just drew and went. Yeah. And sliced him. Uh, he bled out. With my rapier. Uh, or a rapier, if you are French. Okay. And, um, <laughs> and so then I and took then, his wand. Or no, I didn't take his wand. You did not take his wand. And then I walked away at this point, Creighton shows up. No, no, everybody, everything is fine. I'm sure Rokan here, the Honorable our Guard, did quite an amazing job and blah, blah, blah. And he tries to calm down the, the guests, or the, um, the onlookers. Mm. At this point, Adeltiln, the newest of the characters, uh, walks but, in. Um, yeah, and then I, I tried to cover up. Yes. Because um, I'm again I'm seeing all these these potions and stuff like that, and uh, I know that he he just helped me. I just saw this person help me, and I know that if I say, oh yeah, he was using uh, potions, and uh, whatever it was, that mm-hmm. um, that he's gonna get arrested because that's illegal. So I uh, I uh, I rolled a crit. And yep. uh, basically was just able to explain, well, uh, what happened was... Yes. The, and they were like, oh, we saw... Th- there was a wand. And I said, oh, no, that no, was just a stick. <laughs> and uh, what actually happened was uh, there was a fire that started because the sun was reflecting off of... I think I used, like, some purple... Like a gem yeah. or something yeah, that I had. Uh, um, yeah, no, I, p- I took out my flask. Yeah. 
And I said, uh, it was uh, the sun reflected off my flask and that started a, uh, a hay fire because there's still the smoke. smoke dissipating. Yeah. And uh, it was almost, because I crit, it was almost like... And in, in the middle of this... <laughs> where perfect, people are yeah. just like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I finally went, ah, good, good explanation. And then after that, uh, somebody walks out uh, wearing a lady, a giant fancy <laughs> hat, and uh, like this uh, hooded, or like coat, a, yeah. a high-collared uh, long coat, mm. and he saunters into it and goes... This man is lying. You have been had. You have all been had by Adotil the Great. And then he uh, he stuck his... The magnificent magician or something like that. And uh, he stuck his wand, the new wand, in the air. And then he tries to teleport. But instead he doesn't. And he shrinks to eight inches tall. Which is still cool enough. So he failed his roll. And he shrinks, doo, 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 and then to like eight inches, <laughs> and then walks walks out between everybody's legs. Uh, all of the guards fan yeah, out. Yeah, we all just thought he just disappeared or something because mm-hmm. we couldn't see him. All the guards, ooh, all the guards fan out and try to find him. And Rokan uh, finds. I think he found some tracks. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I'm. A, everybody else. I'm a, rain, uh, a thief, uh, rogue, or yeah, a rogue ranger, yeah, yeah. and um, so I, I was using my tracking skills and. Uh, Perception, and I saw these like little rabbit feet, and then they got bigger and bigger and bigger. Yep. Um, so I kind of was, um, just sort of looking around. I didn't know the area very well, but I just followed the tracks. And then I saw what did he they, describe they it as? Like up, these little bitty hoof feet, yeah. but like he had a normal sized body. And then I saw him morph, and he no, he, the uh, yeah, yeah, he morphed uh, as he was walking, as he was because um, he walked mm-hmm. up to a gutter. And climbed up a gutter, right? And I, with and still I saw his all the spider climb, yeah. so he just went through the gutter, right? And you saw it go into the gutter, but you also saw right. him start morphing as he right. turned, so, uh, uh, I as he some, jumped the the as he crested over the roof. I used some Assassin's Creed style acrobats, acrobatics, excuse me, mm-hmm. and I climbed up the gutter on the side of the roof, uh, grabbed onto a loose brick, hopped onto the roof, and then I saw him across the way, yep, and chased after him. Uh, so that happens, and then, uh, you saw, and then, still in the running, or the, um, escape, Adeltiln tries to do mirror image, yep. and tries to, uh, do a copy of himself, and then, so he can run, mm-hmm. and he instead, uh, drinks a health potion instead, uh, recovering his health and his sorcery points, and then he's kind of like waiting for the magic to happen. And the magic doesn't happen. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> and then you. And meanwhile, Rokan's busting up after yeah, him. <laughs> Rokan leaps the uh, the gap in the roofs. Oh, that's right. I, yeah, and I had to. And roll then you just that. get into just his face, right in, right in front of him. Yep. And you stand up, and you guys start talking. And do you remember the conversation and how? Yeah, I rolled. I I, I did a perfect jump. Rolled up, drew my sword right to him, uh-huh. and uh, and it was more to try and threaten him because I don't think he knew what was was yeah. going on. But I mean, the real motive behind Rokan chasing after him was I think he probably thought he, oh god he's gonna come and either kill me or arrest me yeah. I just wanted the wand <laughs> yeah exactly um, cause I thought it was interesting and cool um, I really just wanted the wand and not to thank him but to um, Rokan's all about building up his status so the more people that he can have as a network you know the more things he can get away with um, the further he can uh go with his agenda, which I mean, as a player, I haven't figured it out yet, but as a character, I think he knows more than I do, but he he just wanted the wand, mm-hmm. and uh, so we kind of had, like, a standoff, and uh, he, uh, I, I so I had my sword at, like, almost at his neck, and, and then he just kind of reaches his coat open, and it, like, he and, has, and he, yeah, no, he, uh, because he was like, you're he's like, he's got all the... this crap, like a bomb. He was just like, oh yeah. <laughs> and he's got all these bottles. <laughs> like strapped God only knows what they do. So <laughs> I kind of was like, oh, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, and he was like, well, if you want it, take it. And he holds open his jacket, yeah. and there's like, it was in like a little one of his belt loops, and yeah. he's just like, <laughs> leaning in. Yeah, like I dare you. <laughs> and then uh, I remember you leaning in, and he was going, uh, uh, ooh, ooh, uh, ooh, ooh, careful. careful. Uh, <laughs> and he's uh, trying to get into Rokan's head. Yeah, so that, uh, uh, and it worked. Um, and then I eventually talked him. I, I sort of just said, like, listen, I like I have the power to bring you down. I don't care who you are, but I don't want to. I, and I kind of told him in the way of, like, listen, there's a lot of laws in here, or in this in this world that people follow. Some of us don't. 
and that kind of swayed him into thinking, oh, this could be a potential ally, or at the very mm-hmm. least, I can get away with something. Because I think he was—he didn't have a leg to stand on either. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just a gamble. Like, he, even if I stabbed him, or if I accidentally hit the wrong potion, we both could have just exploded. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it was my way of just saying, look, I will totally leave you alone if you give me the wand. And he and he, gave, I talked to him to give me. Well, you said maybe, like, if uh, we can work together later. If you give me that wand, maybe right. like, we can both use each other's assets and resources right. later in life, or later down the road, uh, which you guys do in the next episode. So that's where we left that one. Uh, and, yeah, we'll see you in the next one.